Welcome back to Element 14. I'm Lorraine based here in the UK and this week I'm going to expand on my interactive window project by adding some more inputs. In my last video for Element 14, I created an interactive light-up window with a micro bit attached to some capacitive buttons. I dug up my front garden and I added vinyl stickers to my front window in the shape of a tree. The micro bit was connected to a Raspberry Pi that was lighting up lights, uh, neopixels that were on the tree, and also some infrared control lights. And it was awesome, it was a really cool project. And for the short time that it worked, it was a lot of fun for my neighbors. Unfortunately, it, the capacitive touch buttons didn't last long and I'm gonna need some more inputs for this project. So this time I'm going with no touch inputs. So I'm going with a distance sensor and a pose detection camera. But first, let me show you what went wrong. So there's something seriously wrong with the lights. Um, so you see they're not on. Um, I'm not touching the buttons and blue comes on and you'll see that blue gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And if we look at the code running, the test code shows us that blue is being pressed and it's not. <laughs> so there must be something stuck uh, on blue. It wouldn't be that annoying, only you can't press any other buttons while this is happening. So let's have a look at the buttons then. So here's the, the buttons here, just using my phone torch. Um, so we had a lot of cold weather, which is when everything stopped working. So I think, um, just a lot of water got in here because it was snowing. So you see like blue uh, got a bit torn and it's peeling up and that's the wire. So I'm wondering if, uh, if that's the problem, but I'll open up the box and have a look anyway. So I've unplugged uh, blue, but you can see now red is constantly on. Yep. So I think it's the pads. The pads have gotten wet. The capacitive touch isn't working. So basically, I think it's back to the drawing board for our inputs. We need something more reliable, uh, more durable to North Yorkshire weather that's going to work. Let's have a look at some of the new equipment we need for this project. So this is, we're sticking with the micro bit and the edge connector in the waterproof box in the garden. For the distance sensing, I'm using a time of flight sensor. So this is from DFR Robot, but any VL53L0 time of flight sensor should work. It's just got a connector on the back there, um, which we're gonna use to connect to the micro bit. For the pose detection then, I've upgraded to a Pi 4, and I've also got the Raspberry Pi camera, the Noir camera, so we can use an infrared light if we need to, because remember this is all happening in the dark. I'll obviously need a USB-C charger for that, but everything else should be the same. So I'm still using the same NeoPixels, the same infrared control lights. In the links below, I'll have a full updated shopping list for this project. So we're gonna start with the micro bit and the time of flight sensor. Let's have a look at the time of flight sensor up close then. So this is the sensor, that little black square in the middle. Let's have a look at the pins at the back. So you can see there we got positive, negative, and it's I squared C, so that's C is clock and D is data. So we can wire this up really easily to a micro bit. There we have it, so the micro bits, I squared C pins are 19 and 20, which aren't normally soldered up on this board, so I had to solder them on. And then we got ground three volts and zero volts, which is ground, ground and power. Let's get the micro bit coded then with that distance sensor. So I found this library on GitHub, which is a micro bit uh, time of flight sensor for that chip. So I'm going to copy that um, back here in extensions. We can add it. So we just paste it in here. And then you'll see it right there. And it's really simple. So it's got a couple of blocks. I've got initialize the library, and then it gives me the distance. S distance is actually like the words, you know, 23 cm, as in centimeters, um, which I don't want. I want the numerical value. So we're going to grab that. <laughs> we're just going to show that. Let's just, um, for now, let's just show number distance. And that will just keep showing it on the micro bit. The problem with that is that it scrolls a lot. So I think it might be better to graph it. So let's graph the distance out of 500. So I think this is in millimeters. So let's give ourselves 50 centimeters to play with and see what happens. 
download. So right now it's looking at my keyboard over there, which is like about 50 centimeters away. So I'm just going to bring uh, the blue guy into its view and you'll see the lights going down there. So if I get closer, eh, never gets to zero though. It gets pretty close, three, two, and then we move it out. It's also pretty fast, which is awesome. <laughs> so this is going to be outside and people are going to move their hands towards it like that. And it's going to change the colors in the window. How should I change the color? Should I make it brighter, darker, or just completely change the color? Now that the distance sensor is working, let's set it up for outside. So we're not going to plot it. We need some kind of logic here. So we want to check if it's between certain number of distance, then we're going to send that uh, over serial to the Raspberry Pi. Let's add in our serial blocks. So we need to set these pins. So I did this all in the last um, video um, in a bit more detail if you want to know what all this means. Um, so we're going to say if the distance is less than Let's start with 500. So we're going to have to do a bit of testing with this on site outside. Um, but let's just start with these numbers. So I don't want to hit the road, which I don't think it can reach the road, but I don't want to react to cars. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to only send the number when um, a person walks past, not a car. So let's do that. Okay, and that will send the number off to the Raspberry Pi to control the lights. I've actually added another button to the setup. Let me just show you how I've added that. So it's connected to pins uh, 13 and 14. So I'm going to say 13 is ground because um, it, it wouldn't reach ground just the, the way it's set up. So that's how we set 13 to ground. And then we're going to pull 14 up. So when it pulses low, that means someone's pressed the button. So we can I just like to test that because the buttons can be dodgy. And remember the distance sensor never shows zero. So if I send zero, I know that that is the number. That's the button being pressed. Let's download that and get outside. I'm outside now and um, you can see why it needs to be waterproof. I'm actually doing this in a rush before it starts raining again. So let's open this up. So I've added the Raspberry Pi ground and power and then we've got um, the serial wire as well. As well. I've got serial in and serial out, which I don't fully need, um, but that's 15 and 16 on the micro bit. I've got this extra um, button here. It's a waterproof button. Uh, I'm going to connect to um, 14 and 13 and 13 will act as ground. So here's the, the hole that the sensor is going to look out. So I'm going to just tape this um, to kind of try and waterproof it. Uh, it shouldn't get too wet because it's it's at the side, <laughs> she says. But if we cut a good clear amount of uh, tape on the inside here should get some protection. I've just um, taped the sensor down inside the box so it's just pointing out of the clear hole now. Um, let's seal this up and get it tested and get out of here before it rains. So I've got a really interesting problem with the time of flight sensor now that it's outdoors and installed. Um, I'm gonna run the code. So right now it's just oh, it's just displaying uh, the distance numbers. So if I put my hand up you'll see there's some numbers, but they're a bit weird. So if I go closer, the numbers increase and then decrease. Why? And further away, 110, that's fine. But then 90, 72, what? <laughs> but if we take the tape off, so this is just like sellotape, like plastic tape. Um, you'll see there's got some huge numbers there. <laughs> but now it's 350, 36 centimeters. Yeah, spot on. And then as we go closer, they totally make sense. They go lower and lower and lower. We've got 47 millimeters, 4.7 mm centimeters. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, so the tape is interfering with the sensor. Um, it's just, just tape. <laughs> I think um, maybe it's reflecting the light back into the box somehow. Um, Cause there is, yeah, that has to be it, right? 
so I'm not going to be able to cover this with tape. I'm going to try acrylic and see if that works. Otherwise, this is not going to work. Well, it will work because we still have that range. So we still have that really short range and uh, it does work. Let me show you on the window. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! So the time of flight sensor, it, it works, right? It works, but there's a really obvious flaw in it. The numbers go up and down, even though you're going closer to it all the time. Do you think I should fix that? Like to the user, the window still works. It works, you know, as expected, as you move your hand, the lights change and they would be none the wiser, but I know it. And will it drive me mad knowing there's kind of like a, a bug in my hardware? <laughs> What would you do? Unfortunately, this is just the beginning of problems in this project. I wanted to move on to the open pose detection stuff, uh, but I had huge problems installing it on the Raspberry Pi. So pose detection, I'm familiar with through my work with Lancaster University. I've been doing some pose detection using a Jetson Nano. Um, it's really difficult to film it on the screen because the screen is using all its kind of GPU power to track uh, and use the camera to track people and their poses so to display that and then to record that is really hard so the quality isn't great but you can see here's some of um, the demo projects that i'm doing there so there's lots of people and we're recording their different poses um, using the Jetson Nano uh, 4 gig one because i'm doing it with crowds of people and i'm using multiple cameras as well for this project, I thought using the Pi would be fine because I'm just tracking one person and whether that person is putting one arm up and which arm that is. I thought that would be really simple, <laughs> but it wasn't. So I started trying to install RPI pose estimation um, software onto the Pi with OpenCV, but I had problems trying to run this model because it doesn't work on the latest version of Python. It kind of needs 3.7. Buster on the Pi 4 comes with 3.9. I got it down to 3.8, it still wouldn't work. I'd have to compile Python from the very beginning in order to get this working. I did get the pose estimation working on Raspbian eventually, but it was only three frames per second. So it was way too slow to try and catch people's movements. What I needed to do was switch to Ubuntu. So I had a 64-bit operating system. So I've got that speed and that's what I did. That's what's currently running on the camera. Let me show you it running in the sitting room so you can see it um, in doors and in daylight, which is the key word here. Um, it does not work in darkness. There's lots of reasons for this. One is um, I broke the Pi Noir camera. So we're just using a normal camera. I think the automatic exposure isn't working on Ubuntu. Like it has it on Raspbian, but I'm not sure that's working on Ubuntu because it's completely not picking me up in the dark, even though I'm really close to the camera. So I'm wondering, with lights on around me, so I'm wondering whether there's an automatic exposure problem there. But let me show you what I've got so far. So just set up the camera uh, facing into the sitting room rather than out the window. <laughs> Uh, and this is the Ubuntu desktop. So I'm filming the screen again, which is a bit weird, I know. But although being quite glitchy, the um, pose detection is really good. I'll send you the GitHub repository I used for this. But so that outside box is showing kind of the edge of where I am. I really like that it works from behind as well. <laughs> so yeah, pose detection is great. So this is what I want but it just doesn't work as well outdoors. But I've got a, I think I've got a solution to this. And that's the Pi Noir camera. So I found a, a second camera because I broke the first and a weak infrared light. So there I am, you can see me, that's me outdoors. And it's getting me, it's getting me. I'm quite close to the camera, so I'm in the garden, but it's got potential. So the Noir camera 
with an infrared light seemed to pick me up when I was in the front garden. Um, now that's not quite the path, still got a bit of distance to go, um, but I've got a better infrared light at work that I'm gonna bring home tomorrow and test that out. But I'm really excited because I was at that point, you know that point in the project where you're like just about to give up and then you, throw, you say, I'm gonna try this one more thing and then I'm gonna give up. And that's what I did. I found a, a really uh, dodgy infrared camera, infrared light. I took the infrared camera from a different project, took, it, took a different project apart to get that noir camera out and working onto the um, Raspberry Pi with Ubuntu. And I got that very lopsided uh, footage before the infrared light died. That's how dodgy it was. So yeah, it's really exciting. It's gonna work tomorrow with a better light. And I'm gonna show you now what happened? And obviously with the right equipment, everything went perfectly. <laughs> so here I am um, outside, right hand is red, left hand is blue. Um, I'm right up next to the window, so I'm standing on in the garden here. Uh, let me just step back a bit. And in a hedge, right hand is red, left hand is blue. So the, <laughs> and that's a party, party mode. <laughs> I'm still standing um, in the garden. So as I go around uh, and try and show you from the footpath, let me talk about the code. So this is what was running while I was uh, doing right hand, left hand. So I just put in some prompts um, to make me see what was happening there. Here's the code. So this is the tensor uh, code from Google and uh, the MoveNet model. So these numbers represent different parts of the body um, in this file here. So we've got left wrist and left shoulder. So that's what I'm comparing. So when the left wrist goes above the left shoulder on the Y axis, that means that I've got my hand in the air and the same with the right wrist and the right shoulder. So that's what I'm comparing. And it does this super fast, which is why we get this cool disco effect. There was a lot of dancing in those last clips, but it wasn't fun getting to that point. <laughs> Once I had to install Ubuntu to get the pose detection working, that meant everything else had to be installed on Ubuntu. So the NeoPixel library, which was actually fine to install, the serial um, to the micro bit, which wasn't fine. I installed it all, but it's not working. And then the infrared control lights, which I persevered and I did get working because I felt they really add to the effect. So, but it was just, it was just so difficult to do that on Ubuntu compared to Raspbian uh, with the pose detection. So the pose detection doesn't work on sudo. With sudo command, it deliberately doesn't work with sudo commands, but the NeoPixels and the um, Serial need sudo. So it's just like these little snags, these kind of little gotchas that um, I needed to focus on and persevere and find the solutions to. What I've done is I've made another video of all those little gotchas uh, to show you how to get around them if you want to make this project or something similar. I'd love to see what you come up with and I'd love to hear your answers to the questions that I've been asking throughout this video. You can add your comments on YouTube or at the Element 14 website. My previous project is on the Element 14 community website uh, where I do this whole project from scratch and my other projects are there too. I hope to see you there. Until next time.